John here, guys! And today, we're talking about goggles. No, not these goggles. The new Orca goggle. The FPV Pilot goggle that just came out. The new goggle that everyone's talking about. The new goggle that we still know very little about, even though it's out for sale and you can purchase it and people have already started getting it. Now, I'm going to reference two videos here, one by Mads Tech and one by Izzy Boop. So I suggest that you go watch both of these if you want more detail on what the Orca goggles can do. But I'm going to talk about three reasons why you may want to skip this release and the questionable things that have been going on over at Orca. And we're going to talk about the exciting new release that is coming up from the HD Zero guys or whether or not the Sky Zone 04X V2 with the shark bite module is still the best combo that you can get on the market. Spoiler alert, it is. But let's talk about Orca. You know, if Orca's, if we could go into the Orca company, I feel like their corporate mission statement would be clickbait because they're always showing you teasers. Most of the time, don't actually deliver anything and leave you with a bit more questions than answers. Yes, at CES, they did very excitingly show three different HD systems, one at 2.4, one at 5.8, and one that supposedly be uses 5G. But guess what, guys? We didn't see any actual footage of it. Has anyone? Mr. Steel made a comment saying that the set that he knew of had 90 millisecond latency, which makes DJI look like a super ultimate low latency link. Uh, it's basically considered unflyable, but supposedly that's not the case. So we're really going to boil it down to three major complaints. The first one, which I think is the biggest one, is the fact that there is no benefit today in buying this new version of the goggle versus the current version of their goggle or the previous version of their goggle. There's literally no benefit because there is no HD system to speak of that exists yet. So the only thing that you actually get in terms of features is the optics adjustment, which multiple goggles have already had on the market. All of the teasering at CES is just for things that may come about in the future. And again, I say may because we don't know how long this is gonna take. If it does end up coming out, it could be six months, it could be a year. In this day and age of chip shortage, manufacturing capacity reduction, can we really bet on anyone to release something so far out in the future where they don't even have working prototypes to show at the largest electronics show in the world? I don't think so. When the original Orca came out, they were saying I was hating on them, I was hating on them, I was hating on them. No, I wasn't. Um, I don't care about who makes the gear that I use in FPV. Yes, I have owned eight Fat Shark goggles in the past. I don't recommend that you buy Fat Shark anymore, at least today, because the better one is Skyzone. Now, before I had this goggle, did I care about Skyzone? No, because they weren't the best product. So I don't care about the company I really don't have very much brand loyalty to any of these companies. I just want to use whatever is the best at that time. So the other two big missteps by Orca is they reduced the field of view in the goggle significantly. Uh, you can see by this image from Izzy Boop that it is extremely small in comparison to the V1 goggle. Um, so people are going to say, well, yeah, isn't that worth it for clarity? Now, if we rewind the clock all the way back to about 2018 or so, when the original Fast Shark HDO, the first set of OLED goggles, came on the market, there was an uproar because there was a significant decrease in field of view. Um, the HD2 had 50 degrees, the HD3 had 43 degrees, and it was a sub significant step down to 37 degrees. In fact, Bardwell made a video saying that these were so tiny in field of view that the HD2 is probably gonna be the goggle of choice for many people. That actually caused a huge spike in the value of those HD2 goggles, which were a couple of generations old at that time. But what we didn't quite realize was the significant increase in image quality of those OLED panels were actually going to end up making the HDO one of the best goggle releases of all time. So if they try to say, yeah, people didn't like the small field of view of the HDO at first, 
Well, that's because maybe they didn't realize the increase in image quality, but you don't have that because everyone has OLEDs. Skyzone has OLEDs, Fat Shark has OLEDs, Orca before this new release had OLEDs and at a much larger size. Um, so if we can have OLEDs with the clear image quality at 46 degrees in these sky zones, why would we want 37 degrees and 16 by nine image size and a tiny 33 degrees at four by three, which is what most FPV pilots actually use. What is this? A screen for ants? What is this? I mean, what kind of a misstep is this? It's like, why don't you remember these things, Orca? Well, that's because they're not really an FPV company. They weren't around in 2018 to remember these things happening and they haven't secured the people with the expertise around them to be able to fill in those gaps. So why should we be so hopeful for this new HD Zero goggle release? Well, it does have a lot of very interesting and promising specs, including some interesting integration with the HD Zero system and also ability to have analog input. But is it really gonna be a module bay? The things that HD you really needs to be forward thinking about enough is we still need an analog module bay. Don't just include a line in input. Two, we need OLEDs that are actually of a good size and displayable at four by three. Three, we need a high quality DVR. And four, you need to either have something substantially better than the market leader or a lower price. You can't throw these things out there for $500 or $600 and expect everyone's going to buy them. You have to either beat Skyzone in features or you have to beat them on price. If not, we might as well just all stay with Sky Zones. So why are we so promising about HD Zero and not so much about Orca? Well, HD Zero has been listening to the community so closely in a way that hasn't ever happened. If I had to bet on which one of these things was gonna hit the market first, I'd probably bet on HD Zero, even though we haven't even seen what these new goggles may end up looking like at all. And that's because HD Zero plays things very close to the, ch to the chest. They are not out there giving you teasers. They're showing you, hey guys, we're coming out with this, and then a few weeks later, we have it in our hands. They are iterating extremely fast. They've engaged a lot of people that actually know about the community, about the hobby, about the specs, about the racing, about the freestyling, about everything. They've engaged the Night Spot crew to help in some of those testing things. And just disclaimer, guys, I'm not using HD Zero more than Analog or DJI at the moment, but I have a lot of high hopes. I I am actively trying to help them better that system and whether I end up switching to it or not, it's good for the community to have options out there. They're out there playing money ball. It's really difficult to try to compete with DJI, which is like the New York Yankees because they have so much more money for research and development, so much more money for manufacturing, so much more money for everything. But HD Zero is trying to do it on a lower budget by really paying attention and maximizing all of those development efforts, given the fact that they don't even have the expertise of making these chips these boards, it's extremely impressive how far they've come in such a short amount of time since they have engaged the community. And I don't see that type of engagement over at Orca. I mean, they could have learned from the lessons that Fat Shark learned four years ago had they just bothered to pay attention and they didn't. So why is it so upsetting? Well, it's upsetting because this goggle is not better in any way as of today. If you really wanted to get in um, for a budget price, get the original HDO for $250 to $300, add your Fat Shark VRX. Yes, I know you can't get them right now, but the new HD Zero VRX version is gonna be coming out very, very soon. So stay tuned for that, guys. Carl over there at HD Zero is over there playing chess. It ain't checkers, and I don't know what Orca is doing. They're not listening to the community. They're not reading the room. They're teasing us. We were so harsh on them initially because they asked people to put down money on a Kickstarter from a company that we had never heard before and they wanted six, seven hundred dollars out of your pocket for something that you may not even get. So this is not as bad as that. You are going to get a product, but if you're buying those Orcas, it's probably because you did see the HD systems they previewed at CES. 
S and I don't know if those actually exist. Steel did comment saying that is it still 90 milliseconds latency? So I don't know if he's actually tried it or if he just heard through the grapevine. They're trying to say that it's not, but Orca is very teasy. Like I said, their corporate mission statement feels like it should be clickbait because they tease you at every opportunity possible. And they're asking you to put your money down today even though they're not willing to tell you the specs of this system, when it's gonna come out, if it's gonna come out. It could be six months, it could be a year, it could be two years. How many more iterations of the HD Zero system will be out by then? How many more DJI products will we have by then? So gambling that money today for an inferior product as of today, as it sits, I don't really see the logic in it. Uh, if you do have a decent goggle, just stay where you're at for now. If you do need something, either get the Sky Zone if you want the best, or the best budget value is the Fat Shark HDO V1. What do you think of the comments, guys? What do you think of this release? What do you think of HD Zero really working with the community? And what do you think with these other options that really just aren't? And they're kind of doing their own thing. They're probably spending more of their efforts on government contracts. And it shows because this is all things that could have easily been avoided if they were just paying attention and it doesn't seem like they are. Thanks guys.